Hello folks, I hope that you're having just a great and safe day today. Today I want to take a look at Hubie Cave again. We're going to take a look at uh, one of his stories. Um, it's called The Affair of the Clutching Hand. I just finished it. Um, I read it for the first time just now. It's from this collection. Uh, Morgan Stern, which was published in the 70s, put Hugh Cave back on the map in a major way. Um, I've been doing some Hugh Cave stuff for you um, for the last few weeks um, as I take a dovetail into this incredibly popular writer during the horror um, genre um, and in the era of the pulps and he is an incredibly uh, prolific writer he wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds like 800 and more short stories in the pulp era alone he's probably written more than a thousand stories over told over his over his um history so i've been taking a look at him and horrors horror and horror soap genres are the ones uh, that he has spent the most time talking about but I want to take a look at um, the the, uh, the apparition of the ghostly hand or, or for, for a couple of reasons um, and, and the, the affair of this story um, one of the reasons why I like it so much is because it blends two horror genres that were popular at the time and has aspects of both which I like um, and so, so let's take a look at it let's do a quick little synopsis for you and then I'll tell you why I like it um, and why I'm bringing it up to you so the first thing, um, we're going to open up on a stormy night. We have a gentleman who's our point of view character. He has been given a, a dispatch by telegram um, that says that this friend who was from college, who they haven't really talked about in a while, has completed some research that he was doing. Um, and he is like super excited and he wants to show it to uh, this gentleman because he knows that this guy's the only person who's going to believe him. So he's asked this person to take the, uh, the express train over. Um, from from his apartment over in London uh, to go visit him so that they can show him and talk about it. Um, so that's going to happen. He is our point of view character is doing it. Um, you're going to. It's a stormy night. It's it's late at night, but he has journeyed from uh, London and now he's looking for the residence of the person who has uh, telegrammed him to see what's going on. Um, he arrives at the at the estate. Um, he's going to be met by a butler who's there. Um, he's going to find out some research, some of the research that the guy's doing. This is about page three or four. And um, he's going to start re reviewing some of the research that the guy was doing before he comes down from his room. And, and that's pretty much it. He reviews the research. He sees that this guy who had had an obsession on poisons um, and uh, so forth had been studying poisons. Um, and, and they come together, come up with something, um, and he, uh, some use for poisons beyond the typical poisoning things. <laughs> uh, and he believes that this use will be really helpful for mankind. And since our point of view character is a doctor, he hopes that our doctor will be um, able to help him out. And that's three or four pages into it. So I'll stop the synopsis. It's about a 14 page short story. Now the genre has two kind of horror genres. The first is, is that it has a sort of classic weird antiquarian style of accoutrements. You've got the stormy knight, the guy who's uh, studying, you know, a fiend uh, who's just loves the, these older sort of antiquarian things, doing research uh, into a, a dark mystery, serious area that nobody will believe. He's obsessed because he's finally been proven right. These are the sorts of things that are very much the sort of emblem of an H.P. Lovecraft story, particularly early on in his career when he was writing more poesque stuff, um, not not as much in the Cthulhu mythos, although you do see some Cthulhu mythoses that also had this sort of antiquarian thing. You also see it in stories like M.R. James uh, and uh, in a lot of other places too, um, a lot of famous horror writers. Um, uh, you also see it uh, in The Yellow King um, as well, so you'll see it in, in a number of places that are out there. Um, you'll see this sort of an antiquarian sensibility. So it has that sort of subgenre. It's also a traditional murder mystery, uh, horror mystery. Um, and they're going to be following those steps too. And, and it does those steps in the sort of vein and genre of a, of a from a weird um, antiquarian aspect. So it has aspects of both um, and, and lives in both genres. So as an early example of, of, a, of an early horror short story, it's written in the early 30s uh, for the uh, Pulps uh, series Ghost Stories. I think it has a lot going for it. And if you're a fan of either genre, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy this short story for you. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. I'll link you to the comments below. I'll, I'll try to find it, find it for you. So far, I've been unable to find any of the stories for Morgan Stern. They were written a long time ago, but they haven't, I haven't found any of them that are free 
um, and available for copyright use. So you have to go find the collection, but I'll link you to the collection below um, in case you're interested in it. Um, or you can, of course, check it out at a library or something like that. Have you read this story? Uh, what'd you think about it? I'm happy to engage you in the comments below. And if you like this review, uh, please feel free to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be so many more of these to follow. I do a ton of these reviews of older sort of classics and fantasies, science fiction and horror that we've forgotten about um, or that we never knew about or that we have uh, you've never gotten a chance to read. Uh, and then finally, I just want to take a moment and thank you for taking some time out of your day to watch my video. We all have so many things going on in our lives and so many things happening, right? So many things that are, that are just rivaling and fighting for our time. So the fact that you spent this time with me, man, that's humbling. And I really do appreciate that. So thanks again and have a good one.